Now, the second half of my message, where I'd normally end here, is where it goes a little bit longer. So just have a wriggle if you need to. Stand up if you want. Where are we today in the world here at St. John's? As it stands, until the state government changes uh, the track it's on, and maybe this Omicron variant will change it, we are most likely looking at opening borders in the next few weeks. The state government has said that they will not legislate who can and who cannot attend church, and that is the way it should be. Government should not say who can attend worship. The diocese met, the diocesan council met on Thursday, and they have decided that the diocesan council will not mandate decisions to be made by the local parish. So it is up to the local parish, myself and the executive, counseled by parish council and listening to conversation from parishioners to decide how we proceed at Christmas and next year. Because the government, while they will say churches are open to all, they can say these are the conditions upon which they can enter, as they currently do. It wasn't long ago that we were wearing masks. We're still not allowed to move around. Those of you who've been in Brisbane a few months ago, uh, there was no singing permitted. So the decision is going to have to be made locally. And the risk, whilst great freedom comes with that, and empowerment, the risk is division within our church, St. John's, where members of our congregation find a blue corner and others find a, a red corner, where members of this family of Christ get drawn into the ways of the world that Jesus, we heard last week, said that my kingdom is not of this world this world of deceit and lies and violence and self-service. The risk of when we have to make this decision is this community choosing the ways of the world in how we have dialogue and how we stay unified. The risk of choosing a blue versus a red corner versus saying we are one in Christ and perhaps there is another way, a via media. So the question to be decided that has been weighing on my heart, and I've spoken to a number of you already for the last four weeks, is what do we do when we have to make this decision? Once borders are to be opened, how are we to respond? Do we say services are for vaccinated people only? Do we say services are for all people, regardless, we will not turn anyone away. Do we say services will be some vaccinated, some unvaccinated? And the confusion that potentially follows that. Do we say we're just going to sit on the fence and go back to online services? Sometimes that's quite appealing. There are strong arguments on both sides. I know myself when I first considered this, I had a firm conviction. Because I'm not just Father Greg, I am a dad, I am a brother, I am a son, I am a husband. I have a son who can't be vaccinated because of his age. I have a brother who's suffering uh, in recovery from cancer who's immunocompromised. I have an elderly parent and one who's rapidly approaching elderliness. <laughs> Dad, you're younger than, than, than mum. <laughs> well, I'm not going to go there. Dad's not younger than mum. So, you know, Greg can have a strong opinion and tell you what I want to say, but Father Greg has a responsibility to all of this flock. As do each of us, as brothers and sisters in Christ, who are called to love our neighbour as ourselves, have a responsibility not to choose a red corner versus the, the blue corner and to say, you're wrong, or no, you're an idiot. There are matters that once we start to engage in dialogue, which is the Anglican way, that need to be considered. Matters of health and safety. There are matters, and when I say uh, health and safety, health for, the, for those who are immunocompromised and those who are elderly and those who can't be uh, vaccinated, 
Um, obviously, there are people who have genuine concerns about the vaccination impact on their health. They have the same uh, viewpoint in that it is a matter of safety. I'm not going into whether we justify that viewpoint or not, but it is strong with people. There are matters of freedoms. I have the right to choose whether I get a vaccination or not. Yes, you do. But vaccinations, uh, uh, freedoms have consequences. Choices have consequences. And if somebody walks into this church smoking, I would not have an instant regret of saying, I'm sorry, sir or madam, you cannot smoke in here. You need to leave. So there are behaviors that we do ask people not to, to attend. If someone was violent or drunk, I'd probably choose a couple of bruises and, uh, 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 and maybe Rosalie. Where's Rosalie? Rosalie, where are you? There she is. Hell out of my week talking to Rosalie. And I'd say, come on, we need to escort this person for the safety of others. So there are consequences to people's choices. And I'm not saying people are choosing unvaccinated are going to be excluded, but there are consequences, as there are consequences to having services open to all, because the government is most likely, maybe not straight away, will Im uh, implement certain restrictions, where we might be reduced to numbers. We might have to turn away people, because if we have an unvaccinated service open to all, we might be limited to 50 people. And I would have to say, I'm sorry, we reached capacity. We have 71 people here today. So there's questions we don't know the answers to yet. But there are matters of health and safety felt strongly by different people. Matters of freedoms felt strongly by different people. But what holds us together is that we embody Christ in the world. And how we resolve this and how we work our way through it and and offer grace to other people who disagree with us is important. Grace and mercy. Mercy is not giving you the consequences that you deserve. Grace, sorry, mercy, mercy is not giving you the consequences you don't deserve. Grace is giving you what you don't deserve. Or so someone said to me, we need to show grace patience, respect within this community as well as out there. The church has to be a beacon at this time. So amidst all the evils of the world that escaped Pandora's box, there was still hope. That is a bedrock message of the church. We are a people of hope. Jesus' core teaching was love God and love your neighbor. And Jesus' kingdom is not a kingdom of the world, of the ways of this world. Jesus' kingdom is another way. So as we grapple with this challenge of the world at this time and this place, locally here, St. John's, Harvey Bay, may we never, and I mean we, never forget who we are collectively. Who walks with us and who we are called to be? Difficult decisions are going to be made. Decisions that you probably will feel are wrong. Not probably. That's the wrong word. You may feel these decisions are wrong. You may strongly disagree with them. You may feel the decisions don't go far enough. That we're selling out. We're compromising. We're being purple. At this time, I ask and I pray for your prayers, your patience, your grace as myself, my executive, counseled by parish council, try to find a way forward to keep people safe and honor and respect each person's freedom to attend this place to give their God praise and worship. So God is with us. God walks with us. We are not alone. We are to be a beacon of hope in the world to find another way forward. Together, we will get through this. I have no doubt about that. The end is not near. 
but we are to remain vigilant and on God, shining as a light to the glory of God our Father. Amen.